So this is Tristan Levitt, joins us now, an attorney for the IRS whistleblower, Gary Shapley. We have seen you before, Tristan, and welcome back uh, to our program here. You heard the Democratic lawmaker in the soundbite from Chad uh, questioning about this whole claim about the A-team. Uh, James Comer gave these two witnesses that title. If he's right, how are they the A-team on the inside of the IRS? These are extremely credible investigators. This is Gary is the supervisor of a uh, unit of 12 elite agents from around the country that investigate international tax crimes. The other whistleblower uh, who will be, uh, whose identity will be revealed today is one of those agents. He was the case agent for the Hunter Biden case. I've, I've spoken with both these individuals, obviously. Um, they, they just are very, very professional, very credible, and I'm excited for the American public to see that because it will clearly become evident to them as they watch this hearing that this is the A-team. These are the folks that the IRS put at the tip of the spear to try and find these international tax evasion conspiracies. And a lot of people heading into this, the Republicans, that is, saying, let the whistleblowers do the talking. What should they be asked in that room this afternoon? Well. The thing that, again, I, I think will be most helpful is for them to just gauge the credibility of these individuals. Gary and the other whistleblower brought a lot of information forward in their interviews with the House Ways and Means Committee that that committee voted to release. Since then, Attorney General Garland has said repeatedly that uh, U.S. Attorney David Weiss had all the authority that he needed. Uh, Weiss himself has written three different letters, one before the whistleblower testimony became public and two after, in which his story is evolving. He's changed it to, to try and match the facts that the whistleblowers have released. So for a lot of the American public, it probably looks as though uh, someone is not telling the truth in all of this, and I think that's a fair question. So they can see these guys today and judge for themselves, and I hope the members of Congress will probe. Uh, in ways that will allow the public to figure out for themselves how credible these are. Okay, let's are. go through this now. Jim Jordan will be there today. He said this a bit earlier today. Listen. Early in this case, and actually throughout the case, both whistleblowers' testimony was the prosecutor said, yes, this makes sense. Yes, we should get this search warrant. Yes, we should interview these witnesses. They were full go. Yes, we have probable cause. Yes, we should move forward. And then suddenly it changes near the end. That, I think, is, is, is the key issue. Okay, so that was Jim Jordan. Here is an excerpt from this whistleblower called Whistleblower X um, is prepared to say today, Hunter Biden should have been charged with a tax felony and not only the tax misdemeanor charge, prosecutors did not follow the ordinary process, slow walk the investigation and put in place unnecessary approvals and roadblocks from effectively and efficiently investigating the case. Hunter Biden's going to be before a judge one week from today and plead guilty, apparently, to these two misdemeanor charges here. Will anything today change his appearance in seven days in that courtroom? There's no way for us to know, and I think it's important to note that the whistleblower's goal in coming forward wasn't to change the outcome necessarily for any given individual's, you know, sentencing. But the, what they can speak to is that Clearly, the prosecutors, not only the investigators, but the prosecutors, the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office and the DOJ Tax Division had recommended multiple felonies against Hunter Biden, and those have now all washed away. And so these whistleblowers want to explain to the American people why that is and how it is that we ended up where we are today. You know, Tristan, the media coverage of all of this has been... It's, it's been something, uh, and it's been lacking in some cases. Um, James Comer said, I think these two people will have some insight, the whistleblowers, and maybe they can answer some questions for a confused media out there. Do you think they'll be listening? I hope so. I hope so. The, you know, one of the things that, uh, that you know, most media outlets pay attention to is when the attorney general speaks up on something. They've covered what U.S. Attorney Weiss has had to say. They, they, it, it really is on them to give this equal time to what these whistleblowers have said and to seriously examine the evidence that they've brought forward. Because just uncritically repeating what U.S. Attorney Weiss has said without looking at the evidence on the other side, I think is really doing a disservice to the American people. I know you represent Gary Schapp, but just a few more questions here on Whistleblower X. Is that a man or a woman? It's a man. Okay. Uh, age? <laughs> I don't know precisely, and I'd probably better not get into uh, it, but okay, he's, but he's uh, impressive. Uh, how many uh, years at the IRS? Um, again, I don't know precisely. It's not, it's not quite as many as Gary, who is a supervisor, but uh, this is someone who's very well respected, who has handled significant cases. Um, this is somebody who, again, just, just hearing him, you can tell how thorough 
and credible and professional mm -hmm. he is. And, and why did he decide now's the time to go public? Gary's red line meeting, unlike whistleblower X, was was back in October, as he said, when U.S. Attorney Weiss said he didn't he wasn't the deciding official for Hunter Biden. What whistleblower X has said was it wasn't until the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware took Gary and his team, including the whistleblower, uh, whistleblower X, off the case that, that for him, really, that was the red line, saying, why would we be taken off this case? This whistleblower X is the one that's investigated these charges for five years. He's been the main key person all along, and now a new team of IRS individuals with no experience in this case have been assigned to this. They're the ones that are going to be there for the plea uh, uh, proceedings. And similarly, DOJ did that with its own prosecutorial team. So the fact that, again, all of these, the people who've been on it for this time have been uh, taken off and brand new people are assigned here who, mm -hmm. who don't even, you know, have any background in it. I think that was a key moment, pivotal moment for Whistleblower Act. All right, real quick before we let you go, uh, uh, this 1 p.m. Eastern time today, uh, the identity of Whistleblower X will be revealed, Tristan, about six hours, we're told. Is that manage our expectations wow. on that, this, this will go. Um, opening statements by the whistleblowers? Yeah, yeah, they will absolutely both make opening statements. Okay, okay. all right. Thank you, Tristan, appreciate the preview, and we'll see what happens then, okay? Thank you.